Hello, this is Mr. Marek, and this is our first video on actual physics. The first concept that we need to understand in physics is that of motion, when objects are moving and how to describe their motion. In order to keep it simple, today we're only going to focus on things that are not speeding up or slowing down. In other words, objects that are moving at a constant velocity. Now the definition of motion is kind of a tricky one. We say that an object has moved if it has changed its position. Now that position is going to be relative to something else, um, but that's how we know when something has moved, if its position has changed. And so an object is in motion when its position is changing over time. So the key word in the definition of motion is position. Objects are moving when they're changing positions. Now, a position is something that is defined by an observer, for instance, yourself, and positions are measured relative to a given coordinate system. You, the observer, choose what that coordinate system is going to be. We measure positions in meters, and we give them the symbol x. Right now, we're just going to stick to motion in one dimension, but later on when we get two dimensions, we'll also use the symbol y. And if we ever have to do three-dimensional motion, the third dimension positions are given by the symbol z. The common way to describe this idea, um, the name that you would give it anyway, is a frame of reference. So a frame of reference gives us a coordinate system with which to measure and a system of measurement for it. So a number line, like you learned in math, is an example of a coordinate system. There are positions and a particular starting point or origin. You as the observer get to choose where the origin is. And we also define a direction. You as the observer choose which direction is going to be given positive values of position and the opposite direction will be given negative values. Of position. So the term velocity is the rate of change in position with respect to time. Again, notice the word position in there. Uh, it's kind of a measurement of how quickly your position is changing as time moves forwards. And it's best described in an equation. We give the velocity the symbol v, and always use a lowercase for that so you don't confuse it with another symbol. And so we can write v as being the change in position over the change in time. Now if you're not familiar with that triangle symbol, the triangle is the Greek letter delta, which represents change in. And so velocity would be change in position over change in time. The unit for velocity would be the unit for position, which is meters, over the unit for time, which is seconds. And so our SI unit for velocity would be meters per second. You could use any symbol, or excuse me, any measurement unit for positions, like miles, and any unit of time for delta t. So miles per hour could also be a unit for velocity. Kilometers per minute for fathoms per fortnight, any of those are acceptable units for velocity, but we're almost always going to use meters per second. To kind of write this out in words, the delta x represents change in position, delta t represents change in time. The word displacement is a name that we give for change in position. So you can use change of position, you can also use the word displacement. And so a graph of position versus time, kind of like we made in class with the bowling ball, is very useful uh, for visualizing motion and for writing equations to describe motion. So for instance, if we have a few data points and we kind of draw a best fit line like that, the slope, which is the change in x over the change in t, tells us the velocity. The y-intercept tells us what the position is at time equals zero. You might call that the starting point. In fancy physics terminology, we're going to call that the initial position. 
we give that the symbol x with the subscript 0. You might say x naught um, to differentiate that from x as the variable. So x subscript 0 is a, is a specific value with a unit. So the general form of our equation in y equals mx plus b form will be x equals velocity times time plus the initial position. So x and t are variables, v and x subscript 0 are numbers with units. So if we graph a couple other lines, just for comparison's sake, so we have two lines that look like that, this one would have a greater slope, and so it would have a greater velocity. So this thing would be moving faster. If you compare the kind of bluish, green, grayish line with the orangish line, you can see the orange line gets a head start. It's got a greater initial position. But the other object, represented by the grayish, greenish line, passes it at some point. The dark purple line will represent something with a negative velocity because it has a negative slope. The significance of a negative velocity simply means it's going the opposite direction. So things with a positive slope move in the forward direction. Things with a negative slope move in the opposite direction. So one, the gold line, yellow line, orange line, whatever, could represent something moving to the right. The dark purple line could represent something moving to the left. Another way that we can represent motion graphically is by drawing a picture showing the object at one second time intervals. Sometimes these are referred to as motion diagrams. And so for example, we might create a number line like this and then show two different objects moving along that number line. And so maybe one of them would look something like this, where at one second it's at zero meters, two seconds it's at one meter, three seconds it's at two meters, so on and so forth. So it shows you where the object is at 11 different times. And so from this picture you can surmise that the red object's position is changing by one meter every second. It goes from zero to one to two to three every one second time interval. If I put a second object on this number line, that object, the blue one, is moving two meters every second. So at one second it's at negative two meters, two seconds it's at zero meters, three seconds it's at two meters, it's moving two meters forward every second. And so you can use this to kind of describe the motion of the two relative to each other. For instance, you can note that the blue object and the red object have the same position at two meters at a time of three seconds. So that's the point at which the blue object passes the red object. After that, it's ahead of it. Four seconds, the blue object's at four meters, the red one's at three meters. So you can kind of envision that these two things are racing each other. The red one got a head start, but it didn't take the blue one but three seconds to catch up and pass to it. Kind of putting these on a graph, same picture from before. If we kind of make a graph of position versus time, the blue object would have a graph that looks something like that, where its slope would be two meters per second. If I make another graph, same kind of picture, this time I've got something going backwards. So you can tell that at one second the yellow object is at five meters, and then at two seconds it's at three meters. That means it's going the opposite direction. And so if we plotted what that looks like, that would end up with a negative slope. So from 5 to 3 to 1 to negative 1 at each successive interval, this thing would have a velocity of negative 2 meters per second. So again, the only difference between a positive and negative velocity is which direction you're going. 
And remember, you as the observer, who's defining a frame of reference, gets to decide that if it's not decided for you by circumstance or like a problem on paper. So one quick note before we end this. Um, the terms velocity and speed are often confused with each other. Most of the time in everyday life, we use the term speed because that's what's given to us on cars and things like that. Now they are similar quantities, and they are measured in the same units. So for instance, meters per second can indicate a speed or a velocity. Um, but they have fundamentally different definitions. And so our next lesson will be on the difference between the term speed and the term velocity. They're fundamentally different, but they are kind of similar. just want you to kind of get it in your head that even though oftentimes people use those terms interchangeably, speed and velocity are not the same thing. So that's the end of this video on motion in one direction with constant velocity. Again, our next video will focus on the difference between the terms speed and velocity. Goodbye.